something that needs a little fixing on Far Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric here at Far Point Restorations and Repairs in the mountains of North Carolina. And tonight I'm going to be taking you on a tour of this. This is where I keep all my chemicals for both working on cars, fixing up cars, that sort of stuff, and for detailing cars to get them ready to resell. There's quite a pile of stuff here and I'll go through it with you. This has actually sort of existed when I bought this house and I just added some extra shelving in as the years went by. And then I added this and I'll go over this in a different video, but this is kind of an addition here. That's another type of organizational skill. So if you're enjoying the uh, three part series I'm making here on how to organize your shop for better usage, well, stick around. But so let's take a look at this. Come on in, I'll pull the camera in closer and we'll look at some of the many chemicals that I have here on the farm. All right, we'll start at the very top up here and you can see I've got some B12 Chem Dip. That is great stuff for cleaning small engine carburetors or just really nasty old stuff. You put it in there and you let it soak for 24 to 48 hours and when you open it back up, holy cow, uh, you got yourself something really clean. It is, however, really nasty, but for those who don't have a parts washer, which up until quite recently I did not have here at the house, that stuff is gold. And it used to be about 20 bucks a gallon. I'm not sure what it sells for now, but if you're into restoring old motorcycles, mowers, or small engine stuff, those, a gallon of that is just wonderful. It just really does the trick. Moving on, you can see I've got, I'm a huge fan of Marvel Mister Oil. I think on both channels I've talked about it from time to time, but Marvel Mister Oil is the real deal. And so I've got a gallon size container of it here. And I also have a smaller uh, uh, quart size container of it. And I just use the gallon to top it off because it's really hard to pour just a few ounces out of the gallon size container, but I have that. And you can see my original, I think I got that probably in 86, maybe 87, Marvel Mr. Oil can right next to it there. And I still fill it up and use that. Keeps it from rusting. Uh, I usually have a can of map gas here too, but it's gone. So just oxygen and map gas. That's from my little mini torch that I have. Some bar and chain oil. Here I have filters for the various cars that I look after. Uh, these small ones here. I'm not even sure what those go to. ST6607. No idea. Oh, those are probably for lawnmowers, but I know these taller ones are for the Volkswagen Rabbit truck. I've got a Kubota filter, and then of course we have Mitsubishi uh, cars that we keep those. The Kia is my mom's. Uh, grease up top here, we got dot three and dot four brake fluid. I do have one can of sea foam. I've been meaning to make a video on that, and I probably will make a separate video on that that talks about the. Um, well, I want to try it. I want to compare that to B12 because I've been a B12 fan forever. And then we've got some two-stroke mix over there. Moving down, some real leftovers here. Here's my BG products, MOA, Marvel, Marvel's direct competitor, I would say, B is BG's, and uh, fuel injection system cleaner. And then check these out. These, I got a whole case, a whole case, and they're full. Look at the condition of this can. This is Berryman's B12 that I got at a flea market. A whole case cost me $10. And uh, I've been working my way through it. I think I still have about eight of them left. Maybe, maybe more than that. Maybe uh, 10 still of the uh, 24 that I originally got out of this deal. But I reached out to Berryman's and was like, dude, is this still safe? You know, does it have a shelf life? And they said, no, it might evaporate some. But as long as there's no rusting, which there isn't on any of the bottles I've opened so far, they're just as good as new. So that's really cool. Uh, some Lucas transmission stop li uh, slip. There aren't a lot of transmission products out there that actually work. Uh, most actually make things worse, but I will say that this actually does help. Um, so if you did a flush on a really old transmission and suddenly it started slipping, this is the anti-flush. This thing will, it has some particulate matter in it that helps uh, firm things back up. So it actually does work. It's not a, a perfect fix, but it is something that I, I do recommend. Now we've got a bunch of different compounds here. Um, this company called The Treatment, well, they sent me some great stuff to work with uh, when fixing up the Beetle, the Super Beetle. And it's really good stuff, like it's color code. I looked at it, you know, Color Code 2000 is what I was looking at back in the day. And uh, this was like the closest thing. So I reached out to them, they sell these products. So I have a lot of their waxes. They have rubbing compound, polishing compound. Then I do have turtle wax as well. Uh, some brake grease, some regular grease, diesel fuel additive, brake clean. Holy cow, you can never have enough brake clean. 
My last can of BG uh, 406 intake cleaner, that is like the ultimate carburetor cleaner, but they still sell this stuff. You know, I don't work at a shop anymore that carries BG products, but the bottle has gone to from, you know, full 16 ounce to like an 11 ounce. And now it is, um, oh, I, oh, no, it's not 11 ounce. I think it's eight ounces and it is like 28 bucks for eight ounces. So I'm afraid this is the last can of this I'll ever own. Beyond that was some, some electrical cleaner. I did try Berryman's Chem Tool Carb Cleaner. I don't like the smell. It is so uh, eye-wateringly bad that I don't think I'll ever use that again. And it could be that, you know, how they have VOC and non-VOC cleaner. This says 50 state compliant. Usually the stuff that's, that's compliant, the stuff that's not as toxic, both doesn't work as well and stinks horribly. And that's the case I have there. I do have some tire lube there. And then in the back corner there, there's zip ties and stuff. Uh, and moving down, this will be the last row, and then I'll move the camera down here. We've got uh, antifreeze for uh, bathrooms and stuff like that, but I use it for other purposes here. Stuff that is non-toxic, like if I want to put it into water pipes, I use it for our pump sprayers. So we have, you know, once the first hard freeze hits, all the sprayers are made of plastic, they'll crack. And so I have like a Brindley sprayer and I have a couple of backpack sprayers. I don't want the damage to be done there, so we use that. We'll put a little in there, squirt it through. And if any's left over in the spring, it's not going to harm the plants to spray it on there, so that's nice. In the very far corner over there, you might not be able to see it. Yeah, I think the toolbox is blocking your view. Is like various partial headlight restoration kits. And so I just keep those because you can always do another one with it, you know. This here, this is for my air compressor, air conditioning, uh, evac and recharge machine. It's not something I've ever really shown here on the channel, but I have a, a very old, an elderly R134 machine that I picked up used uh, also at a flea market. And uh, it needed to be serviced, so new desk and dryer filter, new, uh, you know, new oil for the compressor itself and that kind of stuff. And it's a very specific oil, so I picked up a gallon of that. For reasons I'll never remember, I have road flare sitting over here. That doesn't seem very safe. And then we have more of that color treatment. And this is like, this is like our, our car getting it ready to sell bay here. You know, I've got... Um, it's very well worn at this point, but it is, uh, you know, what's that stuff called? Armor All. Man, is that an old bottle of Armor All. And then various types of degreaser. That patio cleaner, that actually works really well on, uh, on a lot of products that are automotive related. Two different types of wheel cleaner. These were something we were throwing out, as I recall, at the shop because they were just old. But they work. I think don't think they spray anymore, but I've used them. This, you can't, oh, oh, oh that's not good. This is stuff you can't get anymore. Westies Bleach White. Is good for white letter tires, but they've changed the formula. It used to burn your hands to use it. Now I've got about a quarter of a bottle of this left, but they have changed the formula and it, the new stuff is pretty much useless, but that's gold. <laughs> More waxes, Simon eyes. Uh, we have uh, car wax for two different types of car here. So some of your older cars that have been resprayed with single coat paint, no clear coat, you want to use a different wax on them or it'll cause damage. Then we have some vinyl protectant, Lysol, disinfectant, stuff like that over here, and a little bit more two-stroke. I'll go ahead and move the camera down now, and we'll take a look at the bottom. All right, back down here, we've got uh, uh, silicone. Again, I've got some BG stuff left over from the very good old days, uh, working on Volvos and some non-aerob, what a non, whatever, uh, another type of sealer. This is for Volvo gaskets, can't even pronounce it properly anymore. Then we have metal polish. Uh, these are uh, for fixing my um, power washer, you know, before you put it into winter, which that reminds me I need to do. Starter fluid here. Uh, this is Fridgy Fresh. This is like uh, you just you put it in your ducts and spray it into your cabin filters and whatnot, and that's going to uh, get stink out of the cabin filter area. That is uh, ultra slick. It's uh, lube, assembly lube. We used a lot of that this year. There is that great uh, wheel bearing press that I got from uh, Dallas Rife there. Thank you, buddy. This is uh, plumbing stuff here. Some, we start moving into oils here. These are 1540 for the Kubota. Some mineral spirits and some dry ice down there at the end. Here we have, and you can't really see it, but a collection of license plates I've pulled off of vehicles over the years. Stuff that, that uh, you know, that I hung on to for reasons I honestly don't remember at this point. Spray adhesives for doing trim work. Croil, there's another thing from the old company. This stuff ain't cheap, man. I got two bottles of it I bought when I left. And I'll probably never use the two bottles, but uh, Croil is um, kind of like WD-40 on steroids. 
uh, you know, it says it's the best. Is it the best? I don't know, but it works really well and it smells pretty decent. So I use that. But I also have WD-40, silicone, glass cleaner, uh, car wash stuff. What is that? Uh, more mineral spirits here and other types of cleaners. Over here, more metal polish. That's valve grinding compound there. Super clean. Boy, those, those guys owe me money. They gave me a shirt when I bought all this stuff. And I've worn it in every video. Uh, if you go back through, there's a lot of videos with the super clean shirt. My wife always jokes that they owe me money for that. But uh, the truth is, it's just a really, really lightweight t-shirt. And in the summer, I sweat so bad, I, I'm drawn to it. So <laughs> there you go. Ever since I got rid of my army shirts, which my wife made me do, uh, which sucks. If anyone has any of those like uh, light brown 80s uh, army shirts, man, I'm down with an extra large if you want to send it my way. Anyway, down here towards the bottom, Power steering fluids for various types of vehicles, mineral oil for Volvos, stuff for Hondas, you name it. My uh, emergency ever supply of B12. Then we get into Mitsubishi transmission fluids. I have conventional Mitsubishi transmission fluid here, and I have the synthetic or CVT synthetic stuff over there. Then we got 1030 down at the bottom there. There's a mix of uh, synthetic and non-synthetic. And I got it. Napa went on sale. It was like $1.99 a quart, and so I bought 15. 40, which is all gone, or 1545 is gone. Then we got 1030, which I still have about half a case of. Uh, 520, which we used to use in our Honda. I think I got half a case of that. And then a whole bunch of 020 and 530. But they're getting down. I bought a case of each, and it looks like I've got about six left of every blend. But synthetic for a buck 99. Those days are over, my friends. Then we do have some UDT fluid for uh, my Kubota tractor. And of course, some antifreeze some uh that's like uh, stay dry more transmission fluid here and some premix Oop, that's actually empty now but um that was for uh, toyota lexus products the pink long life coolant and in the back corner you can't see it but there is maybe you can just see the very edge of that that light teal colored that is a 30 pound can of r134 so that's it <laughs> is that enough as far as chemicals go why do i have all these chemicals on hand i'm glad you didn't ask me that question the answer is I am 45 minutes each way to the nearest parts store or about 45 minutes to Walmart as well. So if I did not have it on hand and needed to go get it, that would be, you know, about two hours round trip. Uh, how, you know, 45 there, 45 back, plus 30 minutes wandering the halls trying to figure out where all the stuff is. So I decided to go ahead and, and acquire a lot of this stuff over the years. And, and some of this stuff dates back 15, 20 years. The good news is your petroleum products like this, they very rarely go bad. Now washer fluid doesn't go bad, things like that. So that's why I keep all of it. Let's wrap this up. So I guess that'll do it. If you are looking for organization of your chemical products, I hope this was an inspiration to do that. And in the last part of this series, I will show you some of the cubby holes I've made. You know, this garage is the biggest garage I have ever owned personally. But when you're working on more than one project at a time, it doesn't feel all that big, especially when you've got cars in both bays. So making sure that everything is organized and that everything has a place has really helped me get the job done. And in the last part, I'll show you some of the additions, some of the cubbies that I've made, some of the tables that I've made, and some of the holes that I've made to make sure that everything has a place here at Farpoint Restorations and Repairs. Till next time, my friends, take care.